Welcome everyone here to the Smash Sport Show right here on Smash FM here on a uh, very early Wednesday morning here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go across to our friends over in uh, of course, the US in particular. And of course, we're heading to Utah in particular. And of course, uh, the conference season, um, they've only played one game in the conference season so far. Of course, they've got uh, two big ones coming up uh, this coming weekend in, uh, of course, they're playing against the two Arizona teams. Of course, uh, we've got two very special guests joining us right now from the Utah women's basketball team to tell us a bit about uh, a very different uh, start to the conference season. Thanks uh, both for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, no, thank you. No worries. Well, I'll get both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us uh, which bar- local basketball associations both of you are involved in, I guess. Uh, I'm Kelsey Reese. I'm from South Australia and I play for the Forest Club. I'm Izzy Palmer from Newcastle, New South Wales, and I played for Newcastle Hunters. As I mentioned in the intro, um, you only played one conference game. All your previous conference games have been postponed. Um, how difficult has it been, like, especially the end of last year into the start of this year? Uh, it's definitely been uh, strange. Uh, fortunately, a lot of teams are going through it, so we're not alone, but... It's been hard because we had a lot of momentum going into Christmas, you know, that big gap of playing games and then having to come right out, play Stanford first round, number two team in the country. Um, definitely not the easiest way to do it, but it was a lot of fun, that's for sure. What did the team learn from that home game against Stanford, uh, which, uh, you know, as you mentioned, they're the number two um, ranked team in the country and you got them uh, very close to getting that victory to uh, LA. Um, trailing by 10 points at the end? I think it kind of just showed us what we're capable of after it was almost a month of not playing and they are the number two team in the country. They've been playing. We came out of quarantine, kind of hadn't had too many game reps. We had a non-conference game against UC Riverside on Friday. So we got a little bit of the rust off, but we were just like, we were with them all game up by, I think maybe 13 at one stage. It was like, it was it was head to head like the whole time, so it just it's a lot more competitive this year, and we know like we realize like how good we really are, and because they're like they're a tough component um, opponent, they're never they're never gonna go anywhere, um, even when we're off by like a little a little bit. So it was a good game, and it's just a good measure to show where we're at, especially out of quarantine, not playing for months. You're now on the road, uh, or so you will be on the road uh, this weekend because you're heading to the desert there in Arizona um, to take on Arizona and Arizona State. Um, how's the preparations been like um, heading towards uh, that road game in, in the desert? Uh, yeah, it's been good. I think, as Pam was saying, Stanford really gave us a lot of confidence and a lot to build off um, heading towards these games. They're both big teams as well, so... To be able to sweep them on the road would be really nice, really good start to our like Pac-12 season. Uh, preparations have been good. We've already started preparing for them. Uh, we're going to be watching film tomorrow and doing a lot of training tomorrow, just focusing on what we need to do for like that particular <laughs> opponent. Expectation, I'm sure, is to win, especially on the road, considering that uh, you only, this will be the only time that you've gone to verse the two Arizona teams um, all season. Um, I guess I'm speaking, you're hoping to try and get that win and at least um, be ahead of them in the head-to-head? Yeah, that's definitely the plan. Win as many games as you can, put yourself as as high as them as you can. Especially, you know, a good conference like the Pac-12, you got to get as many as possible. Obviously, when we last had both of you on the show, um, which was early in the season, has that goal changed at all? Um, now, considering the team of now currently nine and four at this stage? No, I think we're pretty much where we expected it would be. We should have, like, we would have hoped to have got a few more of those losses that we had, a close game against BYU and Oklahoma and, I mean, Stanford, but our pre-season, ma- pre-season matchups, um, I mean, the goal's still the same. We know what we're capable of, and it's, like, it's shown through those games. We just need to finish out and close games the way we want to so it ends in our favour and not in a loss because, I mean, a one-point loss or 30-point loss, it's still a loss. So we need to get a few of those closer wins on our in the win column. So, yeah, it's still the same goal. 
Kelsey, um, you're actually the, uh, I was going to say, you're in the top two in your team for blocks uh, this season. Of course, just behind your teammate, Peyton uh, McFarlane. Um, tell us, uh, how do you think you've gone personally yourself this season? There's a lot of the season to go. And I have definitely been improving. I didn't um, particularly think I did very well at the start of the season, but as we uh, travel to Hawaii, I think I definitely uh, improved and I showed I could uh, play in a game and like really compete against those high level teams. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the season and against the Pac-12 to just compete against some of the um, top bigs in the country. Like the Pac-12 has some of the top post players in the country. So I'm really looking forward to being able to like prove that I can compete at that level and compete against them. So yes, the aspirations for the best rest. Oh, sorry, the rest of the season. right now. <laughs> Big aspirations for the rest of the season. Now, on top of that, Kelsey, of course, you uh, you're averaging about uh, 23, uh, of course, times at the free throw line as well, um, showing at 74%. Um, I guess. Uh, are you happy with the way that, um, you know, you're getting the ball a lot and obviously um, getting your time at the free throw line this season? Yeah, I think fast shots are something for me that I've definitely improved on this season. I felt like I'd always been a good fast shooter in like practice and that, but last year in games, I just, I didn't shoot it at a very high percentage. So this year, that was definitely something to focus on when I got to the line, uh, just to slow down a little bit and make sure to put those in because they're pretty much free points, as they say. Um, so, but it's been really nice to be able to do those strong moves and be strong enough to go through the contact and get myself to the line. Now, Izzy, you're actually the, one of the best three-point shooters on the team at the moment, shooting at 43% uh, so far this year. And, of course, you've been to the free throw line a fair bit yourself. Um, I guess, are you happy with how your season's going and, and especially the way that you're shooting at this stage, and especially from, from downtown? Yeah, from downtown. I think <laughs> I've been, I think it was pretty good. Um, I had a little dry patch there. I think it was like five games I went without converting from the three point line. But I think I'm a bit more confident coming back from injury and stuff, just, you know, jacking it up when I'm open. And I think um, all of our teammates back all of our shooters. So it's like you have people behind you on the bench just saying, like, shoot it. So I, I mean, I'm confident in that. It's a different story from the foul line. I don't think I've <laughs> shot at that percentage for a while. Um, that, could, that could be a lot better. But, I mean, from the field and live play, like, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I'm shooting the ball, yeah. Now, two particular players I want to um, get both your views on, and obviously uh, they're currently both leading rebounding and scoring for your team so far this year. It's uh, Janet Johnston and uh, Brianna Maxwell. Tell us about those two players and what have both of you learned from their games this season? Um, so Jenna has come in and really made an impact. Uh, Pre-season training, she was doing well, but as soon as the game started, uh, she definitely took her game to another level. I think watching her, like, um, just the confidence and strength she has when she drives the ball, no matter if she gets hit, if she doesn't get hit, uh, is definitely something you can take away from her game. And just the willingness to keep scrapping for it after it goes up. Yeah. I'd say with with Brenna, I mean, I said it, I think, before the season. She's one of the best shooters in the country um, in terms of just, like, her shot and her release. Like, it's it, it's insane. Like, she'll be back to the basket, and she's already shooting it by the time she catches the ball. Um, and, I mean, yeah, like, that's just the main thing that Brenna brings to the game is just shooting, and it's, a, like, a big impact for her. I'd say with Jenna, like, both of them are just – when they get into the game, they just switch it on, but – yeah, great rebounder and just score as a freshman. And, yeah, B's just a great shooter. So great assets to the team. Tell us a bit about uh, your head coach, Roberts. Like, I, yeah, I love being coached by um, Coach Rob. I think she's – I said this also in preseason. She's just very honest. Um, she doesn't really care. Like, if you hate her, you hate her. If you love her, you love her. Like, she doesn't really care what you think of her. She's just going to say it how it is. Um there's no like beating around the bush. Like it's just, she's just straight up with you. Um, yeah. Like it's, I really enjoy being coached by her. Um, I feel like the way she coaches can be compared to some coaches I've had back home. And 
like I like that like about her. Um, yeah, so all around good coach. <laughs> good, yeah. Um, as Palmer said, yeah, she's uh, she knows what she stands for, and she's always got to bring that to the table, which is nice. Um, and yeah, even in these close games, uh, she's definitely showing us that we can win against top ten opponent, opponents. Now, as we go into more into the Pac-12 conference season at the moment, is there one particular game? I know you want to concentrate on every team that in the Pac-12 because obviously it's a pretty tough conference as it is. But is there one team in particular you're looking forward to? You like, man, I can't wait for this game because we want to beat them so badly. Um, I would have to specify two games. I'm looking forward to beating my sister at home. And <laughs> That's right. As always, as always. But I'm really looking forward to hopefully going to play Oregon at Oregon. Because they're, they're a good team. They're not ranked at the moment, but they're probably going to be soon. Um, they have a lot of high quality bigs and I just think it's always going to be a fun game against them. How sweet will it be for you, Kels, to, uh, to beat your sister Darcy when you, when you eventually versus Washington? Oh, it's going to be so nice, especially because that will put us up 2-1 in the standings against them. And, you know, bragging rights. <laughs> no, especially because uh, they're not going too badly either this season, so it would be a big win for us. Every Pac-12 game is a big win. Um, but, no, it would just be really nice to be able to beat them. Now, obviously, now both of you have played with each other for a while now. Um, why have both of you learned from each other? I mean, I just know how to play in the pick and roll with Kelsey. Like, I just know where she wants the ball. I, I like, I, I don't know the specific things. I just know where Kelsey's going to be when she's rolling and where she wants it. Like, that's, I think that's important when you have a guard and big like combination because some posts might want to bounce pass or a lob or just they'll pop or they'll roll. Like, it's just there's different little like wrinkles to each post game. So I think I've got that down pretty like pretty down pat and. I don't play with Kelsey a whole lot in the pick and roll, but when I do, I think we're pretty successful. Yeah, definitely. I would say, like, similar in the pick and roll, because it's always nice to know, like, if your guard wants to rip base or if they want to step back, shoot it, or if they want to, like, go over the screen. And just knowing how to play off that and knowing um, what spots I need to get to in order to get the ball from my guard and what spots I am going to see my guard if I'm in the post and the double comes. Like, I know exactly where they are to kick. So, yeah. Considering that both of you play in a co two completely different local associations um, here, here back home, is there any chance once both of you finish college um, to play at one, one, of the, one of another's, you know, like NBL one clubs? Oh, honestly, I haven't really thought about that far in advance. Um, obviously, after college, the dream would be to uh, play professionally, so either in the WNBL or EuroLeague or something of that sort. Um, but yeah, honestly, I could see it happening. I, it's probably not in the written down in the planners <laughs> right now, but it's possible. It's possible. How's that friendship going? Obviously, both you've um, been friends prior to coming um, to Utah uh, and playing together there. How's that friendship now? Since now you've played together at Utah? I mean, it's just, it's the exact same. Like, we live together, go to practice together. Just, it's just good having so, having someone else from back home, like, around. So, I mean, Kelsey and I are closer, but we've always been, like, there for each other. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's just the same. It's good having someone from Australia. It's always nice having someone from back home. Um, when you speak about things, I'll be fine. <laughs> I asked this question when I had both of you on the show earlier this year, which I oh, sorry, late last year, um, which is early this season. What does the sport of basketball mean to both of you and now especially being there um, in Utah? Remember what I said last time? Um, I you, think said, me, you said it was an outlet for you and you couldn't, um, you couldn't get the words out. Oh, yes. I was, that was great. Um, yeah, I get it. I think for me it's just... Uh, it's a connection with lots of people. Like I always grew up in basketball. It's kind of like a family to me. And it's also, yeah, the place I turn to when anything else isn't going right. Like if something isn't going right, I'll just shoot for a while. 
with some loud music on, like get in the gym. Yeah, it's definitely the place I turn to when nothing else is going right. And it's definitely what I enjoy doing. And it's kind of a family now. Everyone, like most people I know are associated with basketball in some way, shape or form. They play, they used to play, they coach. Uh, they know someone that plays. They, yeah, so. I don't know. Like, I just love basketball. The people in it, I'd say 95% of the people I'm closest with are related to basketball in some way. So I think that just speaks volumes to how, like, like the impact has had on, like, my life and just where it's taken me. So I think, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it. It's just, like, a part of what I do. It just, yeah, it's routine. So, yeah. A two-part question, and I haven't asked this these two last time we had um, – both of you on the show. The first one is, what have both of you learned from basketball, which you've taken into your, like your normal day to day life? I think lots of things. Like obviously the cliche ones are like teamwork and being able to work with others and all that. But also like managing your time and like uh, I don't know the word for it right now. I can't think of it. But like being able to like invest in something so heavily to get something out of it like just knowing how to put your all into something and work towards something like as a bigger picture not just focusing on the task you're doing but seeing how the task you're doing affects everything else in your life I would say I think the main thing for me is just that not everything always goes to plan in life you can have this plan or this is going to happen it's never going to go the way you want it to. Or even if it does, there's always going to be something that's not written down or you've got in mind. So, I mean, I didn't think I'd end up in Utah and I'd like, I wasn't, ex- you don't expect to get injured and all of these things that just happen. So, I mean, you just got to learn to adapt. I think that's the main thing, just learn to be adaptable. And yeah, you can, you can plan everything. You can have every day written down on, on a schedule. It's just not, it's not all going to be fulfilled all the time. So, yeah, that's the main thing. Izzy, I need to ask you this. Uh, you mentioned about your injury just a moment ago that you had to um, recover from. Is that now fully healed? I mean, yeah, it's something I've just learned to learn to deal with. It's not going to completely go away all the time just because of, like, all the different surgeries I've had and stuff. But, yeah, it's the best it will, will ever be. So, yeah. And then for both of you, um, is there any like things that you want to improve on personally yourself in your own game like for the remainder of this season? Focus, not necessarily like improve, but just focus areas. I've definitely got a few of them. Uh, the big focuses at the moment are like staying down in defense when guarding the perimeter, uh, rebounding, so both boxing out and just when I crash the O-boards, just getting like two hands there because I've been getting a fair few O-boards this season, but just being able to hold on to it with like three people around you. And then just focusing on what I can control, like setting good screens, like um, chasing the ball every time, uh, really focusing hard on the finishes because of course you're going to miss some, but like if you can miss just because it misses, not miss because you did something wrong is the way to go. Um, I just say just consistency with everything, like coming back and trying and being confident and backing myself and everything, but just stringing together um, consistent games. So not like having like you're going to have off days, but um, just not going back to back. So having consistently good games where, you know, I'm just confident in my offense and solid on, on defense. So I'm just like going in and just doing the the little things that I'm I'm used to used to doing. So yeah, that'd be the main thing. So a couple of like harder questions about your teammates. Very similar how I asked last time I had both of you on the show. The first one is any embarrassing moments by anyone on the team? Not at the moment, no. I don't think so. I mean, everyone does dumb things every day and there's like little things in practice, but nothing significant that it'd be like, oh, that's embarrassing. Like I think everyone just does embarrassing things all the time. Is the comedian the best singer, the best dancer? And has that changed since we last had both of you on the show? I'm going to go with I doubt it's changed, but I also don't know what we said the first time. We, we, might, um, we said comedians, we said we think all of us. I mean, dancers, we said we think all of us with our TikToks. 
Um, comedians, probably Deja and Andy. Yep. Um, yep. What's the last one? Singers, Inesh. I'd say that's pretty much pretty much the same answer as last time. Yeah. Um, has anyone gone TikTok famous since we last had both on the show? No, no. <laughs> I think I think our commitment to TikTok wavered a little bit the yeah, last few months. But we we might put ourselves back out there again. But yeah, <laughs> not at the moment. So, so on top of that question, then is there anyone on the team has improved their Aussie accent? since we last had both on the show. I'd say, oh. I'd say Ines. She's from Portugal and, I mean, she barely spoke English when she first got here, but she's the one oh, who can yeah. actually nail it the best, which is, yeah, makes definitely. no sense in my mind. But, definitely. yeah, she can get the Aussie accent the best. <laughs> Interesting versions, but definitely not it. <laughs> And we've both you've been over there in um, in the US for a while. Have have you lost any of the Aussie accent at all? Even though, to be honest, I don't think you have. Um, but sounding both of you, I'm gonna go with no. Um, I always used to bully my older sister about it because yeah. her being the only Australian on her team, just to be understood, she just changed like a few words, oh, yeah. like going back and forth most of the time. But sometimes she forgets. Um, but I think with the, us, with there being two of us here, uh, it's definitely e- easier to keep it because otherwise, yeah, we bully each other <laughs> in the nicest possible way. Um, so um, have, I'm assuming both you've convinced all your teammates to come down to Australia over the summer. Or hey. that's if, of course, that's if you are able to come back. Uh, maybe not this summer, but uh, we've definitely got a lot of them on board, even some of them thinking they might go play in the NBL 1 for a bit. So how's the support from back home uh, from your respective clubs, Newcastle and Forestville? Yeah, they've always been supportive, um, especially, like, upon making the Australian team last summer, like, they were yeah. very supportive of that and things like that. Yeah, they've always been really supportive. Yeah, same here. Like, I mean, you'll see on social media for posts, something will be posted, like from a game or a highlight or something, and I'll have all these just like older members in our club comment, like "Way to go, Izzy" and stuff. I haven't spoken to them in years because they've been here for a while. Or just yeah, they'll they'll be like "Go new," like they say they'll say "On your new or just stuff like that. So yeah, it's, the support's always there. So these last two questions, someone ask. Um, we mentioned we mentioned about embarrassing, which we figured there's nothing, nothing embarrassing so far. So, is there any silly moments that's happened on your road trips? Silly or funny, I should say. Where we were in Hawaii. That's been that. Oh, and Oklahoma. We've only been on two road trips. Um, no, I really don't think. I don't know. I feel like there's nothing distinct that stands out just because there's stuff happening all the time um yeah I I don't have anything for you at the moment um yeah sounds boring but yeah I I don't have (laughs) for anyone back home that should uh Follow your team's progress throughout the year. Obviously, going well at nine and four, and obviously you've only just played your first conference game of the season. What would be your advice to um, you know people back home, especially in Newcastle and in Adelaide, that uh, should uh, support your uh, support both you throughout the remainder of this season? Hopefully, uh, to uh, obviously see some uh, wins uh, on the board very soon. Um, just follow the teams. Uh, pages on social media and you'll get to see most of the updates especially twitter they like to post a lot of videos there and when it comes to them at time definitely turn us on support us and yeah it'll be fun to watch yeah i just say that we're not like your typical like top 25 team but we can get there easy like easily so it'll be a fun journey to watch um these next few weeks and we're always playing top 25 school, power five schools because of the conference we're in. So they're always entertaining games. So more of a reason to watch college basketball. 
Now, have both of you hit a half-court shot during a game or at training? And is has any of your teammates done that as well? And have they hit it? Uh, I don't think anyone's hit one in the game yet, unfortunately, this season. Uh, but yes, uh, every shoot around, so just before each game, we uh, do like a shooting drill, which always ends in a half-court shot. Um, I haven't gone on this season yet. Palmer's has got a couple, I think. I hit one. And yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a competition between the the upperclassmen and lowerclassmen in the team. We split into two groups and we have a tally of who's got who wins the most. So who hits the half court shot after every shoot around? Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you, you answered that one because I was going to ask who's leading that one. So, okay. um, but uh, both of you, thank you so much for giving up uh, some of your time to join us. Uh, best of luck in Arizona this weekend. Uh, obviously, it's the big one coming up uh, on Thursday and Saturday, your time. And uh, and let's hope uh, you can uh, at least win both games to uh, get yourselves back to two and one for the conference um, after that tough loss at Stanford. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Thanks Thank for talking you. to us. Thanks for having us. Enjoy your morning. No worries. And that's uh, Izzy and Kelsey. They're uh, joining us there from the Utah women's basketball team. Of course, we'll put their upcoming schedule coming up, uh, of course, so you can check out their games, which are all live streamed. There's more on the Smash Sports Show right after this. Don't go away here. Coming to you from Morwell.